pleased to inform you that we have arrived at the labyrinth. Please be advised that the punishment for trespassing is execution. Please be advised that electrical storms on the surface of Tartarus make departure impossible at this time. Resident count is as follows. 3,071. Resident deaths, including but not limited to executions, are as follows. 1,684. Resident escapes are as follows. Zero. The interior can be chilly. Take a scarf with you, Captain. I would also ask that you leave your Captain's ID with me, in the event that you do not return. I can make the assurance that I will not leave with another Captain unless you do not return within 876,541,652 hours. Oh, speak of the devil. Captain, I am receiving a transmission from the prison's docking authority now. Attention, unauthorized spacecraft. This is a maximum security installation. Your presence here is an explicit violation of UDL corporate policy. You are hereby confined to your docking platform until a ticket detailing your crimes has been filed and notarized, at which point your vessel will be seized and you will be executed. I'm sorry, you people? Did you just cast a generalization on upstanding UDL employees? That's a fine of 200 bits. You're up to 5,708, not including the cost of your execution and the disposal of your remains, which will be assessed posthumously. All right, I'm feeling generous. I'm transmitting the idea of a productive, law-abiding employee so you can see what one looks like before you die. Anyway, Tartarus Docking Authority signing up. Hang on. Another ship just pulled into your dock. Wait, is that from the Groundbreaker? What the? Pay no mind to that. Just have a pleasant day. Transmission terminated. Biometric ID received. Transferring data to external cartridge. How can I be of assistance? May luck be with you. Of course, as I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. Nobody's ever broken out of the labyrinth. Didn't say nothing about breaking in, though. Let's look around. There's gotta be a few ways through here.
MSI. I'm not one for rousing speeches, but the captain needs our help. So get in there and fight! Look who it is. I'll be damned. I was prepping the studio for our announcement, and here you are as a bonus. And I see you've brought the kid along. Babysitters may be expensive, but they're worth it, you know. Yeah, yeah, keep talking, pal. I'll just keep thinking of a place to bury your body. I had heard you'd taken a mechanic under your wing. What's the matter, girl? Couldn't find actual employment? The captain's treated me right. Better than any of you bored folk ever have. I'm exactly where I want to be. When you go off and get yourself shot, try to avoid taking one to the face. I'll want it recognizable to show to my citizens. My word! You've correctly identified the most recognizable man in the colony. Remarkable. It's a wonder what Phineas saw in you. Then again, He's an insane person. Thankfully, he's our insane person now. A proper company man. Yes, he is an extraordinarily obstinate fellow, isn't he? Fine, he isn't working for us per se. Semantics, he'll come around. But that's between us. As far as my adoring citizens will know, we've turned a dangerous crackpot into a working class man. It's a miracle. Oh yes, go on, wake them up, add more mouths to feed. That'll solve our starvation problems. I don't know what half-baked plans that simpleton in a lab coat has been leading you through, but it's done, it's over. Let me ask you something, Captain. Have you at any point thought about not fucking up our entire society? Are you kidding me? We're out here trying to clean up your mess. I'm making actual progress towards stabilization and recovery. You're just getting in the way. If I and my people can ride it out in luxury and happiness, yes, yes I would. I don't know if you've noticed, Captain, but Halcyon's pretty much a lost cause. I'll admit, there's no shortage of talent and scientists and engineers there. Look, I'm not an unreasonable man. If you manage to storm the castle, as it were, and make it out of here with Phineas alive... Ugh, I can't exactly afford more havoc than you've already caused. Fine. If you survive, you'll need someone to sell the rest of the board on your plan. Are you out of your mind? Rockwell's the biggest monster in Halcyon. You got any idea how many lives he's destroyed? How many people he's hurt? I've had enough. You even think about cooperating with this... this... animal? And you and I are finished. You're damn right it is. 
Ugh, if you're gonna place more faith on this brat than the chairman of the fucking colony, then there's no hope for you. Go get yourself killed. have an uncanny talent for complicating my life. You've disrupted the balance of power. You've upset the natural order of things. You've introduced uncertainty, and there is nothing I despise more than uncertainty. Do you imagine you're leading some grand revolutionary army? Those barbarians from Monarch are running wild in my prison. I suppose I have you to thank for this indignity. You're nothing but a rabble-rouser. I'm going to put an end to your little rebellion, and then I'm going to have you and your associates arrested. Hmm. You make a nuanced and compelling argument. Here's my rebuttal. No. Dr. Wells is being held in my custody. His cooperation will prove invaluable, even if I have to beat it out of him. All that's left to do is put down this riot, arrest you, and then get on with the bloody business of saving this colony. In that we are in agreement. An end to violence is precisely what I want. An end to chaos. An end to senseless loss of life. The only obstacle standing in my way is you. I take no pleasure in this, you know. I simply have no other option. Leaving you alive is too great a risk. Goodbye, Captain. Fair enough. I'm giving you exactly one chance to parlay with me. Interesting that you think I'm going to die here. I believe I'm more than capable of taking you on. Fair point. I don't know how you've managed to defy the odds. By every reasonable estimate, you should be dead. Yet here you stand. I've devoted my entire life to protecting Halcyon. I'm not afraid to die in the line of duty. There isn't much of a board left, thanks to you. You've thrown this system into disarray. Cleaning up your mess will be the work of a lifetime. You were always an unknown variable. I tried to recruit you, but you threw your lot in with that madman, Phineas Wells. This prison is equipped with an auto-mechanical warden. I've had it programmed to eliminate you on site and rinse your remains down a drain. And don't worry. I will inform Dr. Wells that you died heroically or something.
Wish I could do that. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. I know, my friend, I know. And now it's finally over. The board's finished. It's only a matter of time before the entire system slips from their grasp. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. Hold on, Doc. Are you telling me the Earth went dark three years ago, and the board's just been covering this up? They've been incredibly effective at concealing the truth. Right now, the only people in the colony who know are standing in this room. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, you're right. The road is long, and we haven't a moment to waste. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds, and then we're going to fix this damn colony one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? I can't tell you how glad I am to hear that. <sighs> when I revived you, I thought we were going to save this colony all by ourselves. But I was wrong. We can't save Halcyon on our own. We're all going to have to pull together, somehow. We are not a colony anymore. Our last connection to Earth has been severed. I don't know if we'll survive, but we're going to have to try our best. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. 
The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Sanjar's civil liberties and worker-centric policies were slow to catch on with the other corporations. But as Halcyon began its long, arduous journey toward recovery, Many of Terra 2's smaller townships started adopting MSI's alternative corporate structure and eventually became entirely self-sufficient. In the coming years, many of these townships managed to eke by, where otherwise they might have starved. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took sublight salvage in a controversial direction openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers' docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. Under the leadership of June Lake Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave June Lake the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the Groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Even the Gorgon asteroid, though a distant enigma to most of Halcyon, felt the aftershocks of your actions. Olivia and Minnie Ambrose worked together to cure the marauders Adrena Time had created. Through their partnership as scientist and administrator, they discovered the harmony that had eluded them as mother and daughter. And through years of patience and effort, they discovered the means to wean Halcyon from the scourge of Adrena time. Their work eventually allowed Wells and his scientists to treat many of Halcyon's marauders. As their addiction waned, the colonists who had lived for so long under the thrall of Adrena time returned to their communities and loved ones and joined in the effort to save Halcyon. In spite of everything, the Gorgon asteroid remained a sobering reminder of the potential for progress and disaster in humanity's most ambitious efforts. The Rizzo's company in Halcyon dissolved after the collapse of the board. Needless to say, the launch of Spectrum Brown was indefinitely delayed. A stockpile of Spectrum Brown remains buried deep beneath the ruins of the old distillery. 
abandoned to time and attrition. With the dissolution of the board, Ruth Bellamy found herself without the two constants in her life, Byzantine culture and her sister Belinda. In the face of this new reality, she struggled to find a direction for her life. The colony had moved on from Halcyon Helen and would require new heroes in the years to come. And so Ruth Bellamy decided it was time to exit stage left. She quietly disappeared from public view. The dissolution of the board did not mean the dissolution of the ambitions of Cedric Kincannon, the charismatic leader of Sublight Underground. Cedric offered Slug's transportation services to the newly thawed colonists and set to work ferrying resources and food wherever they were most needed. For better or worse, Slug headgear became fashionable in the following years. As the board began to disintegrate, Spencer Woolrich found himself at a crossroads. Cling to what little stardom remained to him, or help usher Halcyon into its new future. To the surprise of many, perhaps himself most of all, Spencer chose the latter option. Having learned a variety of different skills in the many different roles played throughout his lengthy career, Spencer founded a radio serial dedicated to staying alive despite the odds. His subjects included how to survive violent encounters with only grazing wounds, dispense pithy one-liners for tense scenarios, and, of course, how to look good doing both. After a brief attempt at dating Helen as one person rather than two, which both Bertie and Helen found too strange, Bertie struck out on his own to try his hand at raising woolly cows. Many of his former Rangers teammates soon followed, accompanied by the woolly cow the team had originally plied with alcohol. The dairy farm thrived under Bertie's leadership and care. The dairy rangers privately believed that the woolly cows softened Bertie's temper considerably. Although the only one brave enough to say this to his face was promptly headbutted. Due to the board's dissolution, many of the Prophet's old customers no longer found quite the same value in productivity seminars that they once had. With her business drying up, the Prophet chose to take her followers down a new path. Months later, salvagers on Eridanos found clues leading them to a seemingly abandoned bunker out in the wilderness. Inside, they discovered horribly mangled corpses sacrificed to a blood-scrawled portrait of a sprat-headed deity. The Prophet was not among the bodies. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people. Sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Melstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. As much as he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar known as Max eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. 
he only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless. Unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself, Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, Junle bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker. And Parvati, enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and Jun Lei were never far apart. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Caron Group, an MSI subsidiary of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide, or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories, could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. The revival project was hard and painful work, but in the end, Despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Even after Wells passed away, the Hope's scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. Their efforts continue to this day, which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation, owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the Hope's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. No one knows what's happened to Earth and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this, the name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. <laughs>